Hello, it is day 20. Of course, it's Saturday and tomorrow is Sunday. That's our day 21. And so you're going to get the whole word as your day 21. Can you imagine? Uh, we have been able to fulfill that time of prayer and fasting with the Lord. How exciting. And tomorrow is going to be a great service. So don't you miss it. We're looking forward to God doing great and mighty things in our midst. But we want to uh, close on uh, um, a, a scenario that is found that has given a lot of people some pause to think about. And it's found in Matthew chapter 17. And we're going to start with verse 14. We have a bit of a dilemma. And Jesus and disciples are out ministering. And a man comes uh, to Jesus with a problem. And it says, and when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and sorely vexed. And oftentimes he falls into the fire and off into the water. And I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. Woo! What a situation. So he's already been to the disciples. The disciples have prayed every prayer. It seems like they know how to pray. And this boy is not free. And uh, he is terribly, terribly uh, uh, possessed by demonic spirits. When they come on him, I mean, he does things that you would not do if you had uh, your own control over yourself. They throw him into the fire. They throw him into the water. I mean, you know, listen, devils are mean and they hate the, the every person that God has created. So that's why you will see in every place that uh, demons are having are being influenced, whether it's in a uh, different uh, religious uh, uh, sex or um, things that are happening criminally, you will see some aid of violence somewhere that someone is being abused, some way that someone has been taken advantage of because the very spirit behind it is the enemy. And so uh, Jesus himself, I mean, is he a little annoyed with his disciples? You know, he's not, you know, he's not telling them off because he, they don't have power. What he is uh, upset about is that they, you know, have seen so much. They've already been given authority and yet they don't know how to operate in faith concerning this matter. And there's a little uh, key, verse 20. And, and so the disciples ask him in verse 19, it says, Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could we not cast him out? And Jesus said unto the disciples, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, remove hence and, and, and yonder and place yourself, sorry, remove hence to yonder and it shall be removed and nothing shall be impossible unto you. How be it this kind goes out only but by prayer and fasting. Okay, so this has been a big dilemma. Because many people feel like, okay, unless we go and pray and fast, then, you know, this, you know, a, a, a demonic spirit cannot be removed. Or, you know, if they have a, a huge prayer request or a, a huge trial, they'll say, well, we must pray and fast about this. Again, let me remind you, as we started this fast, we said fasting does not beg God to do something that he, he didn't intend on doing. The fact of it is, is the word of God tells us that only the plans and purposes of God will come to pass. But our praying causes us to come in agreement with the word and to believe the Lord to do it so they manifest in our presence. See, some people think if I pray and fast, I'm going to convince God to do it. But God is never going to work contrary to his word. He's going to do what he said in his word to do. What happens in this situation and sometimes other situations is we face something that seems to be beyond our faith level. For instance, I mean, we have uh, faced this epidemic that has hit the world. And, you know, I've had precious men and women, you know, share different, you know, stories of, you know, when 
they were getting calls, when people were uh, sharing with them, talking to them about uh, the fear that would enter into their minds, whether they were going grocery shopping or the calls that they were getting. People were under just this deluge of, of fear and this world was in a chaotic state. And here's the reality. You know, some people said, well, you know, I always believed the Lord could protect, the Lord could heal, but I am afraid. You know, and so what was going on in their life? Did they not have faith? No, they had faith. Well, did they lose, you know, their love for God? No, they love God. What happened is that they faced a situation that was far greater than they've ever experienced or ever needed faith to develop. And so all of a sudden now they're in a situation where I have to get my faith over above this mountain that is a problem and a challenge to me right, right now. And so when these disciples are seeing this young boy, I mean, throwing himself in this fire, doing terrible things, they've never seen it in their entire life. You know, are they affected? Absolutely. Their natural senses are affected. Just like when we see different situations, our natural senses are affected. You know, when you see someone in just a dire position, your natural senses are affected. And so if I stay in that affected area of my senses, what's gonna happen is I'm like, oh, that's too bad. I'm gonna move with sympathy. Oh, I can't even imagine what that'd be like. Oh, it's so terrible. So what we do is we get in the side of, uh, of feeling bad and feeling the weight of what's against them instead of moving with compassion. Compassion is different. Compassion leads us to be able to act out in faith believing. That's my dog Sunday. I'm talking to a whole bunch of people here. You be good. Uh, so we come here, come here. So we want to stay in a place of faith, believing God to, to land our faith according to the mountain that we're facing. This boy was a mountain. It was a mountain that was overshadowing their faith. And so what, what prayer and fasting does is fair, prayer and fasting begins to cause our senses to come in line with the word of God. It means our spirit now becomes stronger than our natural flesh. And what we couldn't believe for before, we now have faith to believe what God said and see it come into manifestation. That's the power of prayer and fasting. I'm telling you, your faith has become stronger. Your ability to believe and to come in agreement with what God said has been greater than what you even realize. And when you're facing situations and challenges where you are finding yourself not speaking in faith, but being moved by your natural senses and not being moved by the word of God, I'm telling you, that's a time where the fasting and prayer bell should go off in your life to say, I need to pray and fast, not to force God's hand, but to move myself into a greater level where I can believe him to do what he's already wants to do concerning this situation. So this time that we've been having is not just for 21 days, it's for our entire life. So let me pray. Father, I thank you for everyone that has joined us on this prayer and fast. I thank you, Lord, that no matter what mountain we face, Lord, you are above every mountain. Your name is above every sickness, every disease, every symptom, every report. You are higher. You are greater. Your name, Father, there's nothing that your the name of Jesus is has to bow to. Your name is the highest of the high. And so today, we thank you, Lord, that we're put into remembrance that as we mix our faith, as we believe you, nothing is impossible. And so, Father, thank you for the opportunity to fast, but also thank you that you will quicken our hearts to continue to fast and pray, continue to uh, cause our heart to be enlarged in the very trust that we have, in the very confidence that we have, knowing that our God is with us, that our faith is deepened, and that the Word of God is true for every day of our lives. Listen, family, thank you so much for joining in and allowing me to share this experience with you every day. And we are just looking forward to the next thing that God is about to do. So stay tuned because we're gonna, we're gonna share more things 
in just the upcoming week. God bless you. Get ready for our service tomorrow.